Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Jared. This is Luigi. We are the co-owners of Brooklyn Tweed. We make yarns here in the U.S. We source all of our fiber from the U.S. and we also work um, with U.S. manufacturers. I really enjoy talking to a group of designers. One of the beautiful things about knitting is that you get to create whatever fabric you want and make the fabric that's perfect for whatever intention you have with your design. I'm a very nostalgic knitter. I feel very connected to these yarns that feel like they've been here for hundreds of years and that will still be beautiful a hundred years from now. And that was really my approach in making the, the in making all the yarns that we make. When it comes to the wool, uh, we look for uh, breeds. Uh, we are a company that's committed to breed specific yarns. Wool is an entire world. There are hundreds of types of sheep, different wool breeds. It's something that kind of celebrates the biodiversity of wool and also the different qualities that these different kinds of wools can bring to a finished yarn or, or a finished fabric. Wool and spun, worsted spun. Um, the way that the wool is um, comes together in a wool and spun is very similar uh, to um, a tumbleweed as far as um, a concept. As opposed to the worst spun, where you really are working with um, flies and you kind of twist them together uh, almost the way you would twist spaghetti. Woolen spun is just softer all around. It's a really lightweight fabric where that texture isn't cut like sculpturally in the way that it would be in a worsted spun. We've got two shawl, one shawl here and then another shawl here and you can see how much crisper and uh, more sort of structured the fabric is with the worsted spun. I'm gonna do a quick profile of the yarns that we do make. One thing I wanna say about Dapple, it's really unusual to see cotton in a woolen spun prep, which we didn't really know how it would play out. We paired the cotton with a merino wool to bring the properties of the wool that, that make that extra elastic elasticity and loft that merino wool can bring. And we just loved the combination. And when it comes to Dapple, as we were getting ready to launch this organic cotton, we were prepared to talk about the environmental benefits of organic cotton. And as we were talking about this, um, we saw in the launch of a wool cotton blend an opportunity for us to really raise awareness around the very problematic history of cotton in the United States uh, and how that history is intertwined with uh, slavery, um, free labor and capitalism. And while, of course, we um, are not experts um, on uh, history of cotton or history of racism, we are responsible citizens before being a yarn company, before being knitters, before being designers, and we wanted to do our part. We found the National Black Farmers Association and their mission resonated with our goal, with our intent. Um, their whole mission is to facilitate access to, to land ownership for uh, black farmers. Only 2% of farmers in the United States um, are black. Um, currently, uh, and only 0.57% owns land, we felt compelled to do something we've never done before. Um, and that is to donate 3% of the proceeds to this organization. To us, it, it has been another, another step uh, towards making an impact. We ended with a slide of our team here in Portland. We are based here in Portland, Oregon, and we have an amazing team of people that are in this photo that help us do what we do and hopefully we'll be able to keep doing that for many years to come. We thank you so much very much for that beautiful presentation. A lot of questions came in during the chat. What type of dyes do you use, natural versus chemical? Yeah, natural dyes also the issue is consistency, not just consistency of color within one dye lot, but you it's it's kind of amazing. I don't know if you've anybody in the in the room has done any natural dyeing, but you can use the same dye stuff grown from a different batch of plant and get kind of a shockingly different color. It's it's really fun from 
um, an artistic standpoint, kind of a nightmare from the standpoint of selling yarn and guaranteeing a consistency of color across lot to lot. So um, yeah, those those we've only done on really small batches where you've been able to kind of tell the customer, hey, what you're getting is more of a hand dyed product here than a traditionally solid, solid product. For all the other yarns, we use the conventional uh, dyes that they're called uh, either fiber reactive or acid reactive. And the, the way the dye houses and, and, and the people who work there decide which type to use is really color dependent. For example, a black is an acid uh, dye, but for example, a red might be fiber reactive. So reactive dye instead of acid dye. Uh, we are not chemists, but um, the, um, the, the result we wish to achieve when we talk to our dye house partners is always evenness of color across an entire batch and of course color fastness because if someone is doing color work and they are using um, a dark color and a light color what we want to avoid is that the minute they go wash their garment there is bleeding and that damages you know the lighter color so those are really that's really a, a, a very very um, uh, quick uh, description of the dye process. It says, would love to hear about an aha moment that gave you the confidence to start your company. Yeah, that's a great question. The aha moments sort of happened in small batches over time. When I first started Brooklyn Tweed as a yarn company, I really thought that I was gonna be making a yarn. It would be a one-time thing, would sell it and then would move on. Um, and it ended up being kind of a doorway into a new career path for me and Luigi both. Um, but I think we've had multiple aha moments along the way. I would say that running this business has been like four degrees built into one over 12 years. Just, we've learned so, so much, sometimes the easy way, sometimes the hard way. I would say that the biggest haha moment is that there is no substitute for hard work. And I know it seems so obvious, but uh, in all you know, humility, it doesn't matter how talented, how skillful, uh, how creative and imaginative you are or your team is. And, and, and we're really fortunate in that regard to have a, a fantastic team. In our philosophy, Jared and I are delayed gratification people. We prefer uh, not to uh, jump on the, on the quick uh, success or on the quick um, fix, but to really think about long term. That's, that's been a humbling lesson and also a haha -ha moment. You know, I, I think that that's the real MBA, if you ask me. <laughs> nice sweater, Luigi. What color, pattern, and yarn are you wearing? So, I'm wearing Timberline by Jared. I'm going to turn around so that you guys can see. See the back? <laughs> it's beautiful. And uh, it's in uh, Shelter uh, Almanac. Well, I wanted to ask uh, you just to talk a little bit about the submission process for uh, the designers interested in working with you because all of these um, people are designers and are looking to have their work shown in different places. We have a, a page on our website specifically for design submissions. We also have a uh, email list that you can sign up for on this page where you'll be added so that when we do open calls for designs, you'll receive that mood board and that request and the dates and everything. So yeah, we do a combination at BT of in-house produced patterns that are either designed by me or worked on by our team. And then also publishing designs by independent designers um, from all over the world who submit designs to us a couple times of, uh, per year. And th what that process is like is usually me coming up with a editorial concept, creating a mood board and uh, sort of a story idea for a collection and sending that information out to the email list that we have of independent designers. So that's uh, a little bit about the process we go through to create the, the pattern collections that we publish. Okay, then why don't we just give them a hand? Thank yeah. you so much, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank and you. We'll, we'll see you online and we'll see you uh, next time.